Today we're going to look at equipment coverage, which is done by surrounding equipment with subzones and obtaining the individual subzone coverage, and risk grades, and how you can apply different fire sizes and gas cloud sizes to those risk grades. I'm going to be using Detect3D version 1.52, which is available at insightnumerics.com. In this example, I've set up the flame detector's field of view for a 10 kilowatt fire. You can see the obstructed field of view for one of the detectors here. For smaller fires, the field of view is smaller, and for larger fires, it's bigger. You can, of course, see the coverage. And this coverage is valid for the 10 kilowatt fire that I set up my flame detectors for. The same is true with the contours. If you look at this contour here, it's really only valid for the detection of a 10 kilowatt fire, as that's what I have my flame detectors set to. You can see that I have these three vessels in the example. And around these vessels, I might be interested in a smaller fire of, say, one kilowatt. In that case, what I can do is to set up a subzone around the equipment that I'm interested in using the new equipment pick tool. Using the pick tool, I can select the vessels and then refine my selection to only include the middle vessel. Once I'm happy with it, I can preview the new subzone and add it to the project. What has happened here is that the software has constructed a subzone exactly one meter around the middle vessel, mirroring its irregular shape, but limited by the extent of the zone in which it resides. Now this subzone has been assigned risk grade A. At the moment, grade A is for a 10 kilowatt fire, but I can change that to a 1 kilowatt fire by using the inverse square law and applying the field of view multiplier to grade A. The field of view multiplier shortens the range of the detectors, but only when the coverage for risk grade A is calculated. This means that while the overall coverage for the zone is still calculated for a 10 kilowatt fire, the risk grade A coverage is calculated for a 1 kilowatt fire. I can also obtain the coverage not just for the risk grades, but for the individual subzones themselves. So I can really isolate the coverage around that one piece of equipment. I'm now going to extend this method, and just as I set up risk grade A for a 1 kilowatt fire at 1 meter away from the equipment, I'm going to set up risk grade B for a 5 kilowatt fire, which is a multiplier of 0.707. I'm going to set that up to be 2 meters away from the equipment. And risk grade C, I'm going to keep a multiplier of 1 for a 10 kilowatt fire, and set that at a radius of 3 meters. Setting up the new subzones is now really easy. I can use the previously defined subzone as a base, simply add one at grade B. Notice how it defaulted to two meters, and set up another one at grade C. Again, this time defaulting to three meters. You can just add that to the project. You can see the three subzones I defined around the equipment limited by the gray zone and I can also see their coverage. The overall coverage is still for 10 kilowatt. Grade A is for one kilowatt, B is for a five kilowatt, and C is 10 kilowatt fires. I can also see the subzones around the equipment and see the individual coverages for each fire around that equipment item. Using this method of analysis is extremely powerful, but it's also very quick and easy once you get used to the equipment pick tool. To demonstrate this, I'm going to set up similar subzones around the remaining two vessels. Here I've isolated a smaller one, and I'm setting up a subzone at risk grade A. Just previewing that and adding it. I'm going to set one at grade B, but set the last one that I defined as the base for that subzone, and again for grade C, and that's all done. So I'm going to look next at the final vessel, again using the Equipment Pick tool to initially select and then refine. I can check my selection here. And then I'm going to add a grade A subzone around that one at one meter. Grade B using that first subzone as a base. And then the final one at grade C. Now in that very short space of time to set this up, I now have nine subzones in the zone. 
and I know the coverage for each fire size at each radius for all the equipment items that I'm interested in. I can see here the overall risk grades. Clicking the zone again will now show me the individual coverages of each subzone. You can see the general pattern that the coverage for risk grade A areas isn't as good, and that's because you're looking at a smaller fire, whereas for B and C you've got very nice coverage indeed. You can of course export all this data to an Excel spreadsheet just by clicking export and flame detector coverage. Now this capability isn't just for fire detectors. I'm going to show the exact same thing for gas detectors. Here I've got point and open path gas detectors defined. And instead of field of view multipliers, I've got different gas cloud diameters for each risk grade. And similar to the fire mapping, for the gas mapping, the coverage for each risk grade is evaluated on the local cloud diameter for that risk grade. I can also see the coverage for each individual subzone around the equipment, and I can export all this data to an Excel spreadsheet. You're also not limited to just three risk grades. You can add as many as you want and customize them all to the standards that you're working to. In this more complicated example, I have a total of nine risk grades. And I've used them in the number of subzones around equipment in three well-defined zones. In the first zone, they're set up just as I had them before. But in the second zone that I'm focusing on now, I've used a number of different subzones, all with different risk grades, D, E, F, G, etc. They all have different meanings and different colors and some surround pipe work, some around flanges, some just around general equipment items. And I can change their name, their color, uh, the radius from the equipment to be anything I want to fit my particular performance standard. Finally, I have a zone at the bottom here. Again, I've got different risk grades and mix, some at risk grade A, others at risk grade H in blue. And of course I can see that both the fire and gas coverage for each of these individual subzones so that I can understand on a very detailed equipment level what the coverage is in these zones. So that concludes this video. Thanks very much for watching and visit insightnumerics.com for more information or to download Detect3D.